What's up guys? Welcome, welcome to the video. The instructional on the Bangkok hooker twist knot. Um, we're gonna get straight down to the nitty gritty of it, but obviously, you know, like, comment, and subscribe if you appreciate. Much appreciated. <laughs> let's get to it. Alright guys, so let's start the instructional on the Bangkok hooker twist. So... Reasons to use this knot. Um, I mean, first off, snakehead. That, that, that is the main purpose of this knot. I believe that's why it was invented. Um, I don't know. But um, it's really powerful for direct braid and top water applications. It's uh, great for ripping through cover, it really increases the strength of the end of your line, and when the fish go to bite your line, you're going to see, um, I'll explain later, it creates gaps in the line, so that the fish's teeth, like for instance, snakehead, will go through those gaps, as opposed to chomping up on your line. Because even, you know, if you're using, like, a chatterbait sometimes, they'll inhale that thing to the back of their throat. And you, <laughs> I mean, they're chomping on your line. <laughs> and that's how you get broke off a lot. Like, you, you can be using 50-pound test with a Palomar knot and still get broke off by a good-sized snakehead. Uh, I was using 40-pound test. With the Bangkok hooker twist knot, I had just landed a seven pounder, and um, I, I I hooked up again uh, down the creek, and uh, friggin' thing broke me off, man. <laughs> I, was, I still wonder how big that fish was, or if I was just you know my stuff was weakened from the uh, seven pounder. But yeah. Um, so what I recommend is about 50 pound test. Uh, you don't really want to be using this for lighter line, but it doesn't really matter. It's just easier with heavier line because, well, I'll show you why. It's a hot swappable knot. It's it's kind of like a leader and a, um, a snap in one, except you don't lose the action of your lure like you would with a snap, and you don't have that extra component kind of... Um, you know, that, that extra thing that can go wrong. Anyway, let's get into tying the knot. Um, okay. So, first thing you want to do, take your knot or your line. I would say, it, it's, it, okay, this is a very versatile knot and you can actually make the length of it. It, go, it Yes, it has a length as uh, much as you want. That's a bit excessive in my book right there, but you could do it that long. I kinda kinda gravitate towards about I would say 18 inches where you double up your line here like this. You just fold it in half. And as you can see, we take this part with the tag end. Let me pull some slack here. Take this part with the tag end. Excuse my dirty fingernails. I just got done working. Um, then we... Th this is how I do it, by the way. Not everyone does it this way. I wrap it around my two fingers once. I just find it easier this way because then I can just remove my finger. A lot of people will just use the one finger and then try to go from there. But this way you just you know remove the finger and then you go one... You go around your index one, two, three, four times. And then on that fourth time, you take it and you go through that initial loop that you created, the first one, with your uh, tag loop, I guess you'd call it, the one that you created by doubling your line. And you very slowly... Just pull on that loop. 
I mean, I mean, might be exaggerating it a bit because, you know, obviously you can just lube it. We all know how we lube our knots. If you're not, you know, just always lube your braid. I don't, I don't care if it's gross. If you're a true fisherman, you want integrity. You, um, it should look something like this. This is about right. But you always want to make sure this is tightened because sometimes it can form a little loop at the bottom. I like to bite it and pull on it. Okay, that was tight. Cool, we're good there. So that was a, that was called a spider hitch, what we just did. I don't know anything about it <laughs> other than that it's part of this knot. Um, and uh, let's see. So, with this knot, people will tell you, oh, you want to tie it, you want to twist it a hundred or so times. It, it doesn't matter. It depends on how long you made this part. So you just, you just hold the knot firmly in your left hand or your right hand, whatever your, you know, your preference. And in, I'm right-handed, so I do it this way. And, um... Yeah, you just start twisting. And then you get, you know, you look gradually get faster and faster as you're twisting. You know, you learn the technique. Start with two fingers in my book. You see how I'm just, uh, I'm keeping it taut. I'm kind of doing this motion. It's a little more proactive or, you know, it's not it's not like, you know, you don't you don't want to leave slack in the knot in the, in the in the twists because if you leave slack um it could twist up the main line. We don't, you know, you don't really need that. It's not a big deal though. And this way you get the most efficient. It's like you're braiding the braid, right? You're taking the braid and you're braiding it. It's already interwoven fabrics and you're taking those interwoven fabrics and interweaving them. So I'm just keeping on twisting. My bar for when I'm done twisting Hold on, <sighs> thumb started to get a little sore there holding the knot, is uh, about when it gets a uh, certain tightness on my index finger. And you, th you might be thinking, this is a lot for a one knot, dude. Just wait, you'll see, you'll see why it's worth it. It's a, it's a really great versatile knot. Um, I think it's very underrated. So it's getting pretty tight around my finger, but I like to have it extra tight. So you, I mean, I've, I've already braided it twice, so now it's double the line it was. But now we're gonna take it, take the, up this loop up to the knot that we initially created about And we're going to hold it there in place. And as you can see, it's just kind of naturally twisting together. That's a good thing. But you want to straighten it out so it's even. And it creates this kind of helix, like a, or a, you know, like a dreadlock or whatever, like, you know, DNA kind of shape thing. Anyway, we're already almost done. So, you just take that and you repeat what you did the first time. Take two fingers, put it around, slip out the one finger, and instead of tying a spider hitch though, we're just going to do a simple overhand. You want this 
overhand to be as close to your uh, spider hitch knot as possible. So you're not wasting any real estate. And we did pretty darn good there, if I do say so myself. I, of course, don't have any line clippers on me. Um, but I guess we don't really need to worry about that for the sake of the instructional. But yeah, that, that's the knot. And you'll notice I did not tie to a hook. You may be wondering what the heck is going on right now. Um, I'll show you. Or, you know, a, a lure bait or whatever. But you just want to make sure these knots are snug. Braid looks beautiful. Um, yeah, so basically how you hook on to something and why I kind of compared it to a leader and a snap in one is because you just take the helix, the braid, you put it through, and then you, um, you part it. And to do that, to make that easier, you can just untwist it a little bit. Because, I mean, it's, an, it's already knotted, so it's, it's going to just retwist. Then you just part it. And you'll notice I'm not even just um, tying on to uh, another lure here. I'm actually tying on to a double loop knotted piece of fluorocarbon with a snook lure on it. In case, you know, like, I'm in, you know, maybe, maybe I find myself in snooky waters. I feel like switching species, target species. Um, so, you can just do that. Um, <laughs> skip them apart there. So, as you can see, I just put it through the hole that I created by parting. And, uh, yeah, after that, it's just bing, bang, boom. You're on. Gotta love physics. Just literally using, uh, gravity and pull force just... Stay right on there. And you'll notice it, it does not slide on this loop. Not really. Oh, exciting. <laughs> That's fresh braid. Once it gets worked in, it won't do that. Here, if I pull it tight, it probably won't slide as much. Okay, I lied. Anyway, it works fine. I've tried this method out. It's not as good as using a, like, regular leader knot. But it works. And, I mean, you know, this is, we just, this is a lot of line right here. So if you don't want to swap, I mean, a little easy methodology right there. And uh, obviously to take off your lure, and if you want to swap, you just, either you push on the part that we put through, or you pull on the part that we pulled over. So I'm going to pull on the part that we pulled over. Just take that like that. And then we part it again. And you take your lure and that big thing here. Make sure you do this in the correct direction, otherwise you will loop it a second time and you most likely will have to retie because it gets confusing. So just like, yeah, just don't, don't mess it up. <laughs> and then, yeah, you just pull it through, pull it back through, same way it came in, it comes out, and then your line is free. And that is the coolest part of the Bangkok hooker, not to me. Um, anything else to add? Just, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're using direct braid, I, I, I just, I, I don't see a reason not to use this if they're not line shy. Um, but I mean, it's like, it, if I'm using direct braid, I'm probably using this knot. If I'm not using direct braid, I'm probably using a fluorocarbon leader or something. And, you know, using an actual leader knot, so... I hope you guys enjoyed the instructional, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you appreciated it. And I hope it was good. <laughs> uh, subscribe, like, comment, do all the things, please.